Hey everyone, I'm Tony from Handlebar Workshops. Here, we're in the office workshop today. You're probably looking behind me here going, office? Well, I call it the office because I do, you know, office-y type stuff. Here I do, um, you know, computer work is behind the camera here. Um, I do, you know, bills and taxes and plan pranks against the white shrewd. You know, office-y type stuff. But even though this is the office, you can see the guitars behind me. And this is where I do most of my music playing. Uh, but recently I've gotten the bug to try something else. Yep, that's right. Four tuners. It's a bass. It's a pretty good one. It's a Dean Edge 09. Uh, I bought it off Craigslist. Uh, came with the active pickups. I'm not sure how much I like them. That's another video. Uh, the Craigslist deal did come with the bass and it also came with a little practice amp. Um, I was kind of happy about that, even though it's got its own stench. Uh, very much a uh, 1980s uh, bowling alley smell. You know, a little bit of cigarettes, cheap beer, and uh, maybe some just a, just a slight whiff of frustration. Let's hear what this bass and amp combo sounds like. Not sure if you can hear it, but it's already kind of... Kind of wild. So yeah, you're, it's a little rough. So you can tell it's 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 not the best. A lot of problems with it. So I was thinking about it, I gotta find a, a new bass amp then to practice bass because that just hurts my ears. Uh, it, it turns out a buddy of mine actually gave me, well, not a not an amp so much as as a speaker. Just a second, right here behind. You can see it's a 15-inch speaker, um, red. Look at the back here. Uh, let's see if we can get it centered here. Reactor Series by the Pro Manufacturing Company, Inc. Uh, professional loudspeakers out of Castleton, New York. You've never heard of that company? <laughs> Oddly enough, neither is pretty much anyone else. Uh, there's very little to find on this company on the internet. Um, nearest I can tell, it went out of business somewhere in the 90s at some point, and... Uh, my buddy got this out of what he said was a keyboard amp. So it had the speaker. And then, hold on a second. Also had this little uh, Motorola tweeter, which according to the internet is supposed to be a pretty good thing. So anyway, building a, you know, being a guitar player, figure, just want to build a cab and hook up a amp head to it. Uh, for guitars, you just pretty much build a cab and throw your speakers in there. Uh, I went to look for plans for a bass cabinet, and apparently there's a little bit more to it when you're building an enclosure for a speaker this big. Apparently, you got to do, you got to take into account the resonance of the cabinet. You got to, and the way it, it sounds. It, there's a lot. I went down a multiple rabbit holes on the internet looking up information on how to do this stuff. Uh, but in order to design a proper enclosure for a, a woofer, for a bass speaker, a woofer, you need to know some uh, some numbers, the feel small parameters, uh, found and determined by uh, Mr. Theo, Mr. Small, and I believe Mr. Parameters. So um, most. Uh, manufacturers supply that with the speakers they build. Since this speaker company has gone out of business and was pretty much out of business before the web actually started, um, there, there, there's nothing. There is absolutely nothing. So, today I gotta find the feel small parameters for this speaker. Let's get to it. Okay, so this is how we're going to measure all of our measurements here. You can see at the top here we've got uh, my phone, and that's actually going through my uh, amplifier, my stereo amplifier. So it's basically a 10 ohm resistor in parallel with the, the speaker. 
the red lines here are showing measuring the speaker, but they'll be measuring across the speaker, across the uh, resistor, and at the points where it comes out of the amplifier here. You can see we're going to be looking for our main parameters, the resonant frequency, the QMS, the QES, the QTS, and the VAS. The procedure I'm following is, is found at the uh, soundwhsites.net. Uh, I will be putting that in the description below this. So you see we're going to have to measure the source resistor, which is the 10 ohm resistor. We've got to find out the real resistance of that. We've got to find out the DC resistance that's just essentially hooking up like it is right here in the, in the diagram and then turning it on to ohms or the resistance. And then we got to measure the actual voltage from the source amplifier, which is uh, where it actually comes out of the amplifier. So it would be on kind of this side of the resistor and then down here somewhere. So then we got to find the resonant frequency and we find that by measuring the voltage across the resistor and watching for a minimum on the voltage there. That means there's a maximum of the voltage here and that's our resonant frequency. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be pumping out a lot of power and then we're going to be measuring the voltage across here and then we know what the resistance is, we'll be able to find the, the source current. Um, and then we'll be dropping it down to resonant frequency, FS, and measuring that voltage again. So here's the, actually here's the speaker voltage at 300 hertz, ESR, the voltage at across the 10 ohm resistor at resonant frequency. So we're going to be finding both of those. Uh, then we also have to measure the cone diameter including half of the surround. Uh, we'll be doing that in millimeters. We're going to add a mass to the speaker to measure uh, the VAS and then the resonant frequency with that mass added. Now there's two now there's two measurements we have to find. First we have to calculate what the VR is. It's not something we're measuring here. So what VR will be will be the minus 6 dB point and then we'll find that down here under the calculate. Now I just wanted to show you here that the website that I'm taking this from which is the Elliott Sound Products website by Rod Elliott here. Um, he's got a Excel spreadsheet here that you can download. I thought about doing that download myself, but I'm kind of worried about downloading stuff that's, you know, from unknown sources. To, I kind of also want to do this stuff myself. I'm a bit weird that way that I like and I enjoy doing all these mathematical calculations. Um, I've got a background in engineering, so, you know, I'm, I'm a nerd as it is. But if you were to download the Excel spreadsheet, it would look like this. And then you could just, uh, as you're taking your measurements, you just plop them into the spreadsheet. And then it would automatically do uh, your calculations for you, which is nice. But I'm just going to do it all on my, my sheet here. I'm entering all my measurements here and then doing my calculations down here. And then we'll calculate all this. All right, well... Let's get down the brass tacks and do it. Alright, just like I showed you on the computer, we've got everything set up here. We've got the uh, phone. It's actually going out through this black cord here, and it goes out to my stereo receiver, like I mentioned. Um, and that's pumping out sound to these, this red and white wire here down at the bottom of your screen. Uh, the white wire is connected to the white alligator clips, and the red one's connected to the green alligator clips. Uh, between the green alligator clips, there is a 10 ohm resistor. It goes there, and then it goes to the speaker leads over here. Now, I've done this before, so I have an idea of where the resonant frequency is at. Before we even get that far, we got to start. We got to find the uh, DC resistance of the speaker itself, and we need to measure the DC or the actual resistance. No, it says it's a 10 ohm resistor, but we got to get a little bit more accurate reading. So we've got the multimeter here already connected to the resistor. So we just turn that on to ohms. Alright, we can see we've got 10.4 ohms. So I will record that on my sheet. And just a reminder that the uh, ESP website does have uh, a nice spreadsheet to put this in. Take the leads off of here. I can. And we will measure the DC resistance of the speaker. 6.2. So we'll write that down. Now we need to find the actual voltage from the source, from the amplifier. So we need to find the voltage across coming out from the red and white wire. And we'll 
turn this to voltage AC. So I will turn on the power amplifier right now. And right now we're not playing anything, so let's hit play. I'm not sure if you heard that, but the speaker just went boom. So here we are at 0 0.08 or 0 0.808. Remember, it's got to be between 5, 0 0.5 and 1 volt. So we're, we're, we're good. We're right between there. All right, so now we need to find the, the resonant frequency. And in order to find that, we measure the voltage across this 10 ohm resistor. And then we start varying the, re, the frequency. The voltage will be a minimum across here, so we got to watch the voltage drop as we, at this point, we increase the frequency. You got to see how low it goes. Now it's going back up. All right, so 41 hertz is our resident frequency. And then we need to find the voltage across that resistor, which we happen to be measuring right now, which is 0 0.095. Okay, now we need to calculate the current, the speaker current. And we got to go above, about 100 hertz above resonant frequency. So we're at 41 hertz here. We got to go about 100 hertz above that. And then uh, we'd be able to measure the voltage across the 10 ohm resistor. Uh, take that voltage, divide it by the... 10.4 ohms of what that resistor actually is, and that'll give us IS. So we gotta go and measure that voltage. Alright, so here we are. 150 hertz. Um, the voltage hasn't been changing too much. Um, you know, 0.005. 0 0.05 or so volts. So I think we're, we're good. And we're measuring at this point 0 0.292. So we'll be able, from that, we'll be able to calculate IS. And now we just need to figure out our, uh, we need to make some measurements to calculate our um, minus 6 dB point, our voltage. Okay, we first we got to measure the diameter of the speaker. Uh, the nice thing about these speakers is that these holes are directly apart from one another, so we'll be able to just measure from, make sure we're in this line here, and then we can measure the cone of the speaker and half of the surround here. We got to measure this in millimeters. do this is we gotta go like this is the only millimeters measure uh, ruler I have so that looks good so we're gonna say about 322 millimeters now we gotta figure out the uh, the resonant frequency we gotta add a mass to the cone and then red a known mass we gotta measure <clears throat> within 0.1 grams and then we got to measure the resonant frequency of the cone with that mass added. So let's figure out the mass. Alright, so here we've got a uh, food grade scale. This only measures to 1 gram, doesn't measure to 0.1 gram, but I've got to, got to weigh around that. So I'm going to hit on tear. It says hello. It's very nice. Now it's at zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take plate of dry rice and I'm going to pour that into the bowl right, right close to 50 okay so maybe a little too much there let's evenly distribute the, the rice here alright so now what we'll do is we'll add grains of rice 
And once it turns to 50, like that, we know we're within 0.1 grams. Because one grain of rice is much less than 0.1 grams. So now we know we're right around 50. Ah, oh well. We know we're right with there. All right, so now we're going to take the rice and we're going to add it to the speaker. Uh, the ESP website says don't to put a bag over it, um, but I mean, really, you can see the dust on here already. That there's not much this rice is going to do. So it's getting dust in there. I'm not even sure if this is going to work. Come back down here. And my power amplifier is off. So we go back up here to volts DC. Turn the amplifier on. Amplifier is going. Let's see. Let's see here. So now we've got power going to the speaker to find the resonant frequency again we find a minimum we watch the power come up and then drop or actually it'll come up pretty high when we hit play here now we gotta find the minimum oh it went back up Four, three, and one five. So we go back down to thirty-two. One four three, and went back up again. So we know that thirty-two hertz is our resonant frequency with the fifty grams on it. So we will record that. Now I just need to calculate the minus six dB voltage, and we'll measure that voltage across the resistor here. All right, we have now taken the rice back out of the speaker. And we will find our frequency minus 6 dB point above and below the resonant frequency. So we got to find the low frequency and the high frequency. We calculated the voltage to be 0 0.166 volts. So we're going to be looking for 0 0.166 volts here. So we'll see what kind of frequency where we're at frequency to get that. So right now you can see we're at 377 so I increase towards a resonant frequency of 41. Alright, so we're at 1633. Okay, so we're right around 37 hertz. So now we're going to drop some more. There's our 41 hertz, there's our resonant frequency. Let's go back up it. Yeah. Never hurts to double check. Okay, so I'm guessing 47 is going to go over. Yeah. That gets us to write 1.64, so we're 0.002 volts off, so 46 is our high. All right, and that is all that we had to measure. That didn't take too long. It wasn't too bad. And from here, we should be able to calculate the rest of our field small parameters and uh, determine what kind of enclosure to put this, this speaker in. To the computers! Okay, so now we've got all of our calculations. And you can see here that we've got our uh, field small parameters. I'll calculate it out. Now let's go through what we found. So here's all the measurements we just did, and then we found uh, VR, and then we found the uh, fr low frequency and the high frequency, the minus 6 dB point above and below the resonant frequency. So if you can go down, you can see how we did this. So we found that the speaker current was uh, 9.13 milliamps, and that the reference current at 300 hertz was uh, 28.1 milliamps. Coming from that, we can figure out that the resonant impedance of the speaker is actually 78.1 ohms and from there we can figure out our R0 factor which is 3.075 
And then you can see right underneath that we've got the uh, negative 6 dB measurements that we already made to find FH and FL. And there's a nice little sanity check that if you multiply FH and FL together and take the square root, they should equal FS, our resonant frequency, within 1 hertz. You can see that we're actually only 0.2 hertz off. So we did a pretty good job there. So we're, I'm pretty confident with these measurements. I, I think I did okay. But if you look, QES here is, is rather large. Maybe you notice that up at the top, but this basically is, is an issue. Uh, looking at other major manufacturers, the QES is, is much, much lower. It's actually usually below one. And since the QES was so large, the uh, QTS was large as well because we're doing a product on top with the QES. So that, that will affect how we determine our, our speaker enclosure. I'm going to go on the assumption that this QES is correct because I don't know what I did wrong. So if you figured out what I did wrong, please leave a comment down in the comments section. Beyond that, we had to calculate VAS using different sets of measurements. Uh, we've got our cone radius, and you can see I, I'm doing d divided by 2, but I'm multiplying that 2 by 10. So what I'm doing is I'm converting the millimeters to centimeters in this way. So rather, I measured everything in millimeters, but I want everything in centimeters, so i got to divide by 10. So we come up with uh, 6.1 centimeters with an effective area in square centimeters. Using the mass that we put on the speaker and measuring the resonant frequencies and the frequency using the resonant frequency and the frequency at that we were able to come up with a cone mass of uh, you know 77.93 grams which is about what you expect for that paper that it's like a thick paper and then, then we have the compliance of 1.93 times 10 to the negative 7 which is about comparable to CMS in uh, major manufacturer speakers as well and I can see here as part of the VAS uh, there's some variables here, or actually the constants, that uh, we have defined it down below. So we've got the density of air, and then also the speed of sound. And this is a good approximation. It gets us close. This works fine. <clears throat> and since uh, at the very bottom here, you can see that we uh, threw in a factor of 10 here uh, to account for unit discrepancies, going from meters to centimeters, liters to milliliters, and whatnot. So in, all in all, we came up with a uh, VAS of 183.75 liters. Now, I don't have it on here, but I did do some more measurements on the actual volume of the speaker itself. Um, and we can go to that, actually. So this is another website I use as well as the DIY audio and video. I'll, again, I'll put a link to this in the, in the description as well. And they give you a good way of figuring out the driver displacement. Uh, the only thing I don't have is uh, the X max here, the linear ex excursion. Everything else I was able to measure. From what I understand, to find X max, you got to tear the speaker apart, and I'm, I'm not willing to do that. So going through all this using the millimeters we found, um, and assuming I'm going to be using a front baffle thickness of a three-quarter inch piece of plywood, I'm mushing and flouting, I'm putting in the, desire, the uh, output units in liters. If you calculate, you can see we came with 2.2 uh, liters for our uh, driver displacement. Again, using another calculator on the DIY audio and video.com, this helps you figure out whether or not you should have a, a sealed or a ported enclosure. Oh, that was me messing around here. This should be 3.85 for the QES. So you do calculate. You can see it is way down here and sealed. Now we know that QES is either wrong or it's really, really bad. I'm just going to go with a, with a uh, sealed enclosure no matter what. I'm pretty sure that's what this came out of. The uh, Pro Manufacturing Company made this, obviously, and they didn't hu have a huge thing. Of this. It's probably very similar to what you would normally see for a, for an amp. So I'm going to go with a, uh, with a sealed enclosure. Since you can do either or for the most part, um, I'm going to go with the seal enclosure and get some little more oomph out of there. I can use uh, the DIY audio and video.com also has a, uh, here is me playing around with the numbers again, um, also has a box calculator, 
eight for our QTS. Um, here we're going to be going for a 0 0.707 Q. Now we're not going to be able to actually get that low because of the QES. So if we do compute for a sealed box, you can see right here it says QTC must be greater than the driver's QTS. The best I can get is a QTC of 2.5 according to this. So I'm, I'm, something is not quite right here. So let me just do 2.6 then compute for a sealed box. So here it's coming up with a um, quite a large amount. So that's where the, these things kind of get weird is uh, you do this. But I was also looking at this one. This is interesting because you can actually enter your own volume of the box and then have it come up with something for you here. Click this here. So here's the parameters that I that we measured or we kept calculated. And then uh, it would actually calculate the QTS for you if you want to. You just click that and it'll calculate it. By estimating the size you want, what this is 85 is about three cubic feet. Of that. And you can calculate the performance down here. You can calculate it, uh, the dimensions here. That's going to be like right up along the side of the speakers there. What you can see here is the total Q of the system, which isn't very good, or frequency, a peak, and everything you need the minus 3 dB frequency and stuff like that. You can plot this frequency response curve with this tool, which is pretty neat. Um, you got to go down here. This is 41. VAS was 183.5.75. And then QTS here is 2.5. We'll just do 2.6. And you can see it, it really, that, that, that's a very weird curve. So MH Audio here also has one for a vented box as well, just like the uh, the DIY audio and video site. I'll put links to all these down in the description, like I said before. But that's what I got. So let's get back on camera and, and talk about some things. So the whole reason I started this was just in case someone happened to find a speaker, say in a flea market or a garage sale or something like that, and they had no idea what the uh, TS parameters are, and it, maybe it's an old one like this one is, and uh, it just didn't, you couldn't find any information on the internet. So you gotta fig figure this stuff out somehow, and I figured this would be a fairly inexpensive way that most people might have, uh, you know, access to, you know, a cell phone with an amplifier and a resistor and a multimeter and a speaker, maybe some alligator clips. It's all fairly inexpensive, and if you're doing any type of, um, uh, DIY type stuff at home anyway, you probably have a lot of this already on hand, so you, it should be fairly simple or at least somewhat inexpensive to buy on Amazon or something like that. Um, yeah, as you can see, I'm wearing different clothes than I was wearing last time. Uh, I've been really trying to figure out this QES stuff. I spent a couple days trying to go over my, my uh, calculations and redoing some of the, uh, the measurements just to make sure that I did it right and that my, my numbers were coming up correctly. Uh, one of the other things, if you don't have an amplifier, say say like what I have back here, my amplifier here for my stereo, um, you could actually just use something like, you know, let's see if I can get it here. There we go. Computer speakers with the uh, line out here to uh, headphones. And then you can just use, oops, and you can just use these um, nifty uh, alligator clips and you can clip it onto the edge and I had one clipped onto the center post as well uh, but it just fell off but you can see what, what that is and then you can measure it that way as well you can um, modify your your voltage and your current just by um, twisting the, uh, the the knob the volume knob so what do we learn here well with the QES the way it is we know it's either um, I screwed up, which could totally be it. I mean, I, I, I don't really know what I'm doing. So, you know, it could be any of that. Um, it could be I did thing, I measured things wrong. Um, and then that's completely possible too. Or, you know, it just could be that it's it's, it's an old 30 some year old speaker. And, uh, you know, it's, it's QES has just gotten, it's gotten worse over time. Cause you know, Lord knows my QES isn't what it used to be. Oh, uh, one other thing uh, you can see here, 
on the speaker that I have. I have it suspended on this gray uh, contraption here. Those gray things are just, I get them like at Staples or something like that. And it's um, made for to build like cubby holes and shelves and stuff like that. You, they come with like little plastic things you put in the corners and they connect together and stuff like that. So uh, you don't have to have that for yours. If you if you do something like this, you can just use, you know, like a piece of plywood with a You just cut a hole in it, put the speaker in it, have the uh, legs on the bottom of the plywood lifted up so it's got some uh, air movement around. Uh, the the website says to have two feet of space in there. I, I, I moved it all around. It was on my desk here, it was on the floor, it was everywhere. It didn't really affect my measurements much at all. Build that yourself. Uh, get someone to help you with it. Use a jigsaw and just cut it out. And uh, just the hole and you can just drop it right in there. And then it'll be nice and suspended so you get your free air resonance. Another interesting thing would be to get a, a known speaker with known Q parameters and stuff like that and do these measurements on that speaker and compare how that the measurements compared to what the manufacturer publishes. You know, I'm, I'm not rich, so I, I don't have the money to do that. I've got the speaker I've got, and, and that, that's, that's it. I'm gonna go with that. I will leave it to you, good YouTube viewer, to, to do that yourself, to find a, a, maybe a Celestian or an Eminence or maybe JBL or something like that, and, and do these measurements on there, uh, and, and then let me know in, in the comments how it turned out and see if the, the measurements match what was provided by the manufacturer. Otherwise, I think that's probably it. Um, thank you so much for spending your time with me. I uh, hope to see you again. I hope you're putting out more videos. Until then, have a good one.